you know, there's there's some weeks that, um, you know, we use the word disappointment. I'm not sure disappointment was is the correct word coming in coming out of last weekend, heading through this week. It is more frustration. Uh, you know, disappointment kind of insinuates that um, you you did a lot of things well and maybe just didn't mount your way that day. Uh, that was not the case in Laramie. We uh, we didn't deserve to win that game. We didn't do enough good things, and the film bore that out um, on Sunday, or in my you know in a lot of our coaches' cases, as we watched it on our iPads on the plane going home from Laramie. Um, I'm you know frustrated with uh, the way that we played in all three phases, and uh, our emphasis this week. Uh, is is back to basics, fundamentals. Uh, we extended the individual time that the coaches got in practice today. We've talked at length about what do we need to do to win this game, and then let's break that down to the basics. Uh, because, like I said, and I'm not taking anything away from the job that Wyoming did. Craig Bowl and his staff and those players were outstanding, and I'm not uh, placing any of blame, you know, the all the burden of blame on the players either. But X's and O's didn't win, didn't cost us that game. It was block destruction. It was uh, finishing blocks, throwing, catching, tackling. It was basic football that cost us that game. And uh, it's our job as coaches to make sure that that uh, we play fundamentally sound, that we're ready to play, and we were not. So that a lot of our focus this week has been back to basics. Uh, we went out in full pads this morning on two on a Tuesday. Uh, had a very spirited two-hour and ten-minute practice. Uh, I was pleased with the effort. Uh, obviously, Tuesday you, you install some new game plan stuff, so it wasn't all perfect. But uh, the tempo, the physicality, those things were, were were there this morning. So that was an encouraging sign. Um, we're facing a an improving Hawaii team. Uh, they lost a heartbreaker at New Mexico. Uh, somebody asked me about you know them having to travel. And when you go to Hawaii, it is a very difficult trip. Uh, and I'm not, uh, I'm sure that this is difficult for them as well, but they're used to doing it. You know, so they're going back to back road trips now. They're going from, you know, to, you know, from New Mexico. They're back, uh, I believe, in Hawaii right now. And then we'll be traveling out on Thursday again. Uh, so that's, you know, that presents a challenge for them, but, but they're used to it. That's kind of standard operating procedure for them. Um, I see a team that's improved from last year. Um, they're always physically tough. Um, I see uh, better fundamentals than we saw a year ago. Um, offensively, a little bit more wide open than they were a year ago. If you look at the totality of the season now, if you look simply what they did at New Mexico, there's, there was a re renewed emphasis on trying to run the ball, and I believe they ran it for nearly 200 yards against New Mexico. So, But earlier in the year, you were seeing a lot of three and four wide sets and uh, throwing the ball a lot. Um, you know, Wolseley played last week. When I went to my uh, quarterback club luncheon, the only game I had not watched yet was New Mexico. So I had seen uh, the vast majority of Wittick's reps uh, throughout the course of the year. And then in the New Mexico game, uh, Wolseley's playing. I've been told in the depth chart that they released uh, has Wittick listed as the starter. We are planning on seeing both quarterbacks. We're just we're planning on it. Um, and, and frankly, I was impressed with the job that Wolseley did, and if I'm pronouncing his name incorrectly, I apologize. Um, but uh, he did a great job last week against New Mexico. I mean, he made a bunch of plays on scrambling, ran it a little bit. Uh, so we are, we're we're going to plan to see both quarterbacks. Uh, Laka Laka is a good back. Uh, Dylan Colley is a freshman receiver that is making a lot of plays, and I see an offensive line that is significantly improved from where it was a year ago. Um, you see them at Wisconsin late in the first half, it's 14 nothing. You see them compete with Ohio State, the number one team in the country. Um, they are in a 15-round a 
heavyweight fight with San Diego State down in Hawaii, where they're they're trading blows back and forth. Uh, so this is a, um, you know, I think a, a pretty good football team. Defensively, they're basing out of a three-four. Um, they have calmed down a little bit from where they were a year ago. Uh, not as much uh, exotic blitzing. There's blitzing, but it's it's not. Uh, as unusual as it was a year ago. Um, there's no way I can get Kennedy's last name right, but number 90, uh, the defensive end, if he catches wind of this, uh, I think you're a hell of a player, dude. <laughs> I just can't. I can't pronounce your last name. Uh, number 90 in the front. Um, yeah, I'm looking at it here. Tu le ma se e le le. I think that's my best shot at it. Uh, he is a heck of a player, as dip, as disruptive a defensive lineman as we have seen the whole year. He plays defensive end on first and second down, and when they get into obvious passing situations, they put him over the center because they realize that he's he's a bad mismatch for most centers, and he's been highly disruptive, and uh, we think very, very highly uh, of him as a player, and he's somebody that we are going to identify when we get to the line of scrimmage. Uh, Jarrell Garcia Williams, linebacker number two, a Las Vegas guy, uh, very good player. He sticks out on film. And uh, Morell Jackson, uh, the safety from Miramar, Florida, six foot, two hundred pound senior, is a very good player. Um, special teams wise, and you guys know I pay attention to that stuff. But um, last year they were all over the place. The challenge was just trying to figure out the craziness and what they were going to do. And this year that stuff uh, has really calmed down quite a bit. And what you're finding is that they were very physical. They run well. They're very sound. They do a very nice job in, in special teams. Um, they come after punts. They're high pressure. They pressure more often than they just sit and return. That's going to be a challenge in this day and age of college football and everybody running the shield. You don't see that very often where people just say we're we're pinning our ears back, and we're coming to get you. Um, they do that, so that's going to present the challenge. And and uh, they they're pretty sound and physical in the kicking game too. So uh, we're four and three. Or excuse me, I wish we were four and three. We are three and four. Uh, that's who we are right now. Uh, like Coach Parcells says, you are what your record says you are. Uh, we are fighting to get ourselves back to 500, um, and we are not thinking about anything beyond that. We are really just focused on trying to play better football this week against a quality opponent. It's homecoming. I, the weather's supposed to be perfect. It's a 1 o'clock start. I'm hopeful that we'll have a good crowd, uh, and I'm hopeful that we will put on uh, a good show and represent our alums and our students and our fans the way that they want us to. Uh, and that's really all we're focused on here this week. So with that said, I'll take any questions. Coach Winnick. Uh Big time recruit, a um, lot of talent. Maybe struggled a bit initially at Hawaii. Do you chalk that up? Maybe this a new system, learn a new system. I can't speak to it. I, I um, it shouldn't be that new because Steve Sarkeesian and the USC folks came out of the Norm Chow family. I mean, they, the the offenses, the terminology might be a little bit different, but the offenses, it's not like you went from the triple option to the spread. I mean, they they come from the same family tree, so. Um, I, I don't think that's necessarily been the case. Uh, it's difficult to quarterback to just step in and play. Uh, he is awfully talented physically. There are some throws that you see early in the season. You're like, oh, why'd you throw that? And there are other throws that you say, oh boy, you know there aren't very many quarterbacks in our league that can stick that one in there. And so he he's got physical gifts. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but I don't want to downplay the value of, of, of number 11 either. I mean, the offense seems to move pretty efficiently when he's in there. Uh, there's, you know, there's obviously more run when he's in there, and there's some quarterback run when he's in there. So uh, we, we're preparing for both and, and expect to see both. Just to do something on Matt Eck, I guess, what does he mean to your program? The average fan doesn't realize the single most important hire a new coach can make is the strength coach. 
even more so than I mean really in order it's your strength coach and your two coordinators your most important hires because they will set the path of the program and Matt X spends more time with the football players throughout the course of the year than the assistant coaches do because Matt's allowed more time with them than we are throughout the course of a calendar year um, you know I wasn't ordered to keep Matt Eck, but he came highly recommended. And after 15 minutes, our first meeting, I was absolutely blown away and knew that, that I was very lucky to in, inherit uh, Matt and have the opportunity to work with him. Um, he's demanding, but he's fair. He's, uh, he's an imposing looking guy, which I believe is important in the weight room. I think if you're gonna have a guy running that room, he might as well be 6'4 and strapped up like Matt is. I think uh, the fact that he played Division One A football uh, gives him some uh, credibility with the players. Uh, and the thing that I appreciate most about Matt is that uh, he believes in his core principles, but he's willing to listen and he's willing to try new stuff. And and um, you know he's he's willing to. Uh, look at it from another perspective and find a way to meet in the middle and uh, I think our entire athletic department is blessed to have Matt. Um, one of the things that people don't probably recognize about him um, is that he is an incredible eye for talent. Uh, like most schools our size, uh, his budget is not very big. I mean everybody in this department wishes we had a bigger budget. and. Um, He's got to find young, capable people to work in that room with him. And the amount of uh, big time power five schools that have come in and scooped up Matt's assistance and doubled their salaries, in some case, almost tripled, uh, to go be assistants at power five places, speaks to the eye for talent that he's got. He goes and gets great young uh, strength coaches. And unfortunately, it's the, the, the nature of our world is that more often than not, they, they get scooped away in a year or two. But uh, he really does a great job of, of, of finding, you know, young strength coaches that are really sharp and come in here and are invested. And I just I, lo I love the culture that he's set in that room. What, what is the culture that he set? It's uh, accountability. It's hard working. Um, you know, it's, it's no nonsense. I mean, they have fun, but they don't mess around. I mean, and um, Matt's not afraid to be tough on them. And in this day and age where, you know, being tough on people isn't always seen as politically correct or, you know, the, the, the uh, sensitivity police are around every corner, um, Matt is willing to be tough on them. And, and frankly, we need that. I mean, we're training young people not only to participate and compete in Division One A athletics, we're we're trying to get him ready for real life. And, and Matt takes a real life approach. I mean, you either get it done or you don't. And if you don't, there's consequences. And there's no, here's a million reasons why my mother wrote me a note and you don't understand and all that stuff. Because as we all know, that's not the real world. And I think Matt, through the what he does in that weight room, not only does he prepare their bodies and their minds to compete, the uh, the sense of accountability and responsibility I think he's preparing him for real life as well what was it in the first 15 minutes that made you know that this was my guy we just his energy his positivity we talked the same language we believed in a lot of the same things um, and we have Matt and I have a very open line of dialogue as I'm sure most coaches who work with Matt do but he's got a very good pulse of our team uh, before you know, I stay out of the conditioning part of it. I've left it up to him because I'm one of those people that will be soft. I will err on the side of, of uh, trying not to do too much. And, and he knows what they need, and I kind of stay out of it and let him do it because I trust him. What do you think's made him successful for so long? He works really hard at it. His work ethic's incredible. I mean, he's in this building most days before 5 a.m., and, and he's here well beyond, you know, 6 and 7. He's a really good person. He's got a great family, great kids, great wife. Uh, he's just one of those guys that, you know, when you he, he's always trying to learn. He's always looking for new ideas. He he knows that there might be a different way to do something that might be better, and he's always willing to listen. And um, you know, he's he he's he's one of our guys now. I mean, Matt 
some places the strength coach when he runs it for the entire department and they say all right you know we'd like you to keep this guy and or you know we'll, we'll work it out but it was obvious that everybody here liked Matt and they wanted me to like Matt and when when you've got a guy that you trust and say he's part of our family no questions about it it just makes everything so much easier what makes that position equally as important as the coordinators because he's got his hands on the team all year long he's with them and there there are certain lessons about mental and physical toughness that are learned in that room and um you know there's uh dealing with failure and 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 persevering when things get tough i mean his job is to make it so hard in there that practice and games are easy and you know that's part of the job description and and matt does a pretty good job of that when you come off a game like hawaii when the fundamentals just aren't there for a game is that more comforting because those can be fixed over a week or is it discomforting because why does that happen halfway into the season uh, I, I don't know if I feel comforted or n not. I mean, a loss is a loss. No matter how it happened, it, it doesn't feel good. Uh, it's, uh, you know, to the point where that one at times was embarrassing. You know, I didn't feel good about it. I didn't feel good about the job that I did. I did not feel good about the job that the assistant coaches did, and I did not feel good about the job that the players did. How and why and all those things, we, we've got to get them fixed, but ultimately the bottom line is we got to play better. You know, we gotta we gotta persevere through some self inflicted difficulty here and and play to our standard and that was not to our standard by any stretch of the imagination. It seems like your teams over the last two years has typically bounced back from these kinds of things. Not a lot of long winning streaks or long losing streaks, I guess. Is that good to know that you, you feel like they should be able to bounce back and put this behind? Uh, unfortunately we can look back just, you know, a week and say, All right, you know, Here's what we did throughout the course of the week, and here's how the players responded. And I know they have it in them. I have no doubt about that. And I know that the leadership on this team uh, wants to make sure that we don't go do that again. So I feel uh, it, it's, not a, it's not a concern of investment. I think, our, I think the vast majority of our team is invested. I think they're engaged, and I think they're working hard. You know, we just – you know, we, we started slowly in the game, and we never got engaged with it, and we, we didn't do the little things that we needed to do to win, and now we got to get that fixed. I would, rather learn, I, I would rather learn what it's like to handle a winning streak. That would be nice, you know. But we got to get there first. What do you think it's going to take for the offense to get off to a, a better start? It's been pretty slow most games. we got to finish drives. I mean, slow in what sense? That we didn't score points? Yes. Not three and outs, though. I mean, we've changed field position. I can think back to the last couple of games. We've taken the ball in our first couple of drives, and we've moved it. We've changed field position. What we need to do is stop stalling in that no man's land of, you know, the 30-yard line. I, I look back on the film, and, you know, our opening drive, we, we've got the ball on the Wyoming 27, and it should be third and two. We get called, unfortunately, for a cut block that, upon further review, was not a cut block. I can understand how the official got fooled with his eyes. It was a very fast-moving play. But we went from what should have been third and two on the Wyoming 27, okay, you know, we got a chance to continue this drive, to second and 24, uh, darn near midfield. And, I, you know, there aren't very many plays for second and 24. I mean, you just, you're trying to get it back in the field goal range if you can't. It's been that type of stuff, you know. It's it, we suffered that way in the UNLV game where we'd finally get some things going and we'd get a, a false start or an ill-timed penalty, you know, misaligned. We got to stop it with the self-inflicted wounds and finish drives in the end zone. Uh, we can't stall in that no man's land. We did that three times in the game. You know, one time I went for it on fourth and four. One time we kicked a 52-yard field goal. <clears throat> Excuse me, and we missed it. And one time we punted. And, and we're able to down them inside the tent. So um, we we can't stall on the 30. we got to find a way to keep going. At the very least, put ourselves in a position where we can kick a field goal and walk away with points. And that has been – the other thing, too, is uh, we've got to try to win each quarter. This is um, – 
you know, this is a couple, you know, you look at the UNLV game and you look at this game and you say, boy, those kids fought their tail off in the second half and they put us in a position where we had a chance to either win the game or tie it with, with a minute or two to go. We got to stop putting ourselves in that position. I appreciate the character and the willingness to fight, trust me, but I'd rather not be in that position. I would rather, you know, be ahead and play better early in the game and not have to, you know, throw it 35 times in the second half to get ourselves back into it. What's the status of McCauley? Uh, McCauley practiced today. I wouldn't call him full speed. And even when he's full speed, he's not that full speed anyway. But um, he's um, he's really trying hard to be out there. Uh, I would anticipate that he'll play. I don't know if he'll start, and I don't know, frankly, if he's got 80 plays in him. But I, I, I would hope that he would be able to spell us. Um, you know, so – so far, so good. I mean, today he he's starting to look a little bit more like himself. With what happened on defense, they score on four consecutive drives last game. I mean, is there a position group this week that you're challenging to play better? Is it the entire group? No, I challenge the entire football team. And it's interesting that you say that word because I said that very word this morning. I challenge the entire football team. we got to play tougher, smarter, more fundamentally sound football. That's the challenge this week. Play to our standard. Hey, you said this was your Super Bowl. I don't think you've used that kind of phrase. I mean, how important is this game just to get back on the right track? I think it's really important. And when, when I say that, I say that in the sense that this is all we're thinking about. Because you know how it is. People in town um, and people around the program, the bowl streak, nine out of the last ten years, that's important. Go, oh, coach, you got to get bowl eligible or – you know, if we get this one, then we can get this one. And then, you know, we can't play that game. We cannot play that game. we got to be focused on this one and this one alone. And when this one's done and hopefully we play well, we can go get focused on the next one. You know, people, ah, you know, we don't, we haven't played well against Fresno in the last, you know, three or four years. And you got to go to Fresno and win. Look, I'm not even thinking about Fresno. We're thinking about Hawaii and Hawaii only. It's a one-game season. In terms of uh, physicality, you know, Wyoming is a very physical team. How would you compare Hawaii in that sense? Similar. Uh, on defense, uh, they're not going to – they're not trying to fool you very often. They're coming at you. They're going to hit you. The the systems are a little bit different, but their demeanor is the same. Uh, offensively, they're not going to – I should say this. In the first five or six games in the year, they were trying to spread you out and throw it. And then in the last two weeks, you've seen a more dedicated effort to running the ball, especially against New Mexico. New Mexico, they got into two tights, uh, one of the tight ends being actually an offensive tackle that just lined up at tight end, where it was clear, hey, we're going to try and run the ball now. Um, so uh, I would imagine after watching our film from last week and what they've had some success, they're going to try and run it on us. Uh, and and we got to be prepared to try and stop that. Do you chalk that up to Wittick being out and maybe changing the scheme because of the other quarterback? Do you think they'll stick with that with Wittick back? I, I don't know that. Um, I mean, Wittick's strength is his ability as a thrower. There's no doubt about it. Um, the other guy's ability is to make plays, and he pulls the ball down and runs a little bit more. Um, but, uh, you know, from a head coach's perspective, they ran the ball pretty effectively last week. I don't think you go away from that. At least I'm not – I wouldn't anticipate that they're going to go away from it. Maybe I'm wrong, but we good? Uh, one last, uh, the march from the arch, uh, been bigger and bigger every year. What have you seen from the turnout from the community? And everything? I, I just, uh, I'm just a sucker for college football and college athletics and, and college towns. I think it's great. It's fun. It's what makes our game different than pro sports. And, and I know uh, we have a, a pretty avid – uh, fan base here we have a very loyal fan base but sometimes it feels like there's a separation from down in town and then us up here on the hill and whenever we can do stuff together in the city and get people excited about homecoming I mean there's no homecoming in the NFL it's what makes college football fun you know the the ability for alums to come back and enjoy a great weekend back and look I mean the amount of alums that come back and tell me they can't believe how much the campus has changed and how much it's growing. And those are all great things. And that's what makes college football fun. And whenever our team, myself, any, any of our guys can be involved in something like that, we're excited about it. The March from the Arch is really cool. I'm going to be at the pep rally up in the quad. Um, 
and um, it's it's what makes college football great. It's like walking through, it's like doing the Wolfpack walk before a big game, and you walk through all those trailers and you see the Wolfpack flags and the little kids, and it's it's what makes college football so much fun. And frankly, I'm a sucker for it, which is why uh, I've been at this level the whole time. Um, and so, I'm, like I said earlier, I'm hopeful we can have a great crowd, a lot of people back on campus, and um, and 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 my hope is that we will play well, uh, and make our alums and our fans proud for a day, and 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 go, you know, show the type of character and fight that I think this team's got. The coach says that he's challenged the team. I guess you gotta, how do you guys respond to that? Uh, got to come out and practice hard. Uh, fly around, have some energy, um, and ultimately you got to win the game. <clears throat> That's the only thing on our mind is uh, practicing hard and coming out Saturday and winning this game. When you went back and watched the Wyoming film, I guess what upset you about that? Um, just how we played. Uh, there was no energy. We're stopping. We get third down stops and guys are walking off the field. We get a third down stop to uh, get the offense the ball back. Um, so they can go down and tie the game and the defense that's on the field not celebrating, the sidelines not celebrating, and it's just like we weren't there. So, I mean, that was upsetting. Uh, of course, how we played was upsetting, but just the lack of energy. I was going to do something on Matt Eck. Uh, you've been with him a long time. I guess what have you enjoyed about him being your strength coach? Uh, his energy. Um, when we first got here, it was kind of like, you know, you're a freshman. You, you don't talk. You come in here and you work. But as uh, time has uh, gone on, me and Egg have a great relationship. Uh, he's kind of like a team guy. He kind of uh, jokes around with us, you know, like the language we use, the lingo we use. He kind of uh, uses that um, high energy. He's invested, and he cares about us. Talks about just the lack of energy from the team. I mean, how do you kind of challenge your teammates and the rest of them to, to play with more energy for four quarters? Uh, it starts with me. Um, guys look at me to bring the juice, bring the energy. And on Saturday, I was more, uh, you know, focused on myself. Like, I got to make a big play and not bringing the guys along with me. So I, I think it starts with me on uh, defense, starts with Don on offense. And, um, I mean, that's part of our job description, get the guys going. So uh, I'll be full of energy on Saturday. Yeah, we know we got to stop the run. Uh, with 11 in the game, he'll, he'll it's more of a zone read, and with 13, it's more of a give. So we got to uh, we got to come out and stop the run like we did against New Mexico, and uh, I think we'll be fine. Kind of a challenge of it to maybe prepare for two quarterbacks, not really knowing who you might see. Uh, defense is, I mean, honestly, is reading your keys. Uh, when you, when 13's in the game, you know it's a little bit more give than pull. But um, it's not really much. I mean, you just got to watch film and know what both guys like to do. 11 likes to run a little bit more. So when you uh, when he's in the game, you got to be aware of that. You come off a loss like this past weekend. How badly do you want to get back out in the field and play against Saturday? Bad. Uh, that's a game, uh, man, you just it's, – it's a long week. Uh, today's what, Tuesday? It feels like we, you know, that we played that game so so long ago, and you know Saturday can't hurry up and get here. So uh, I mean, just take it day by day, try to get better uh, each day, and when Saturday comes, be ready for it. Take take, you know, take the opportunity and do something with it. When you have a game like this where you guys need to get a win, does it help with all the buildup of homecoming and all the excitement around town and campus? Yeah, uh, it's good to have people. Uh, like the fans and people on campus, you know, uh, looking forward to the game, talking about it, hyping it up. Um, but at the end of the day, all anybody cares about is a win. That's all we care about. So uh, just getting out on that field, having fun, having energy, and getting a win, that's all we care about at the end of the day. What would you say to some of the fans that might be upset with the way the season has started? I mean, what kind of message would you deliver to them at, that, at this point? I mean, we're all on the same page. We're upset. Probably more than they are. Uh, the two losses that we've had re as of late are really disappointing to me as a senior, because uh, 
that's not how I envisioned my season or our season to go. Um, I don't think any, <clears throat> I don't think anybody's more upset than me and my teammates. But uh, just continue to support us, and uh, I mean, you know, one and zero at the at the end of every week for the next five weeks might have us in the conference championship. So you never know what happens, but it starts with one, and we got to get it this Saturday. When you look at Hawaii and the teams they've lost to, I think they've lost to three ranked teams. They beat Colorado. Are they kind of similar to Wyoming to where they're better than that record would indicate? Yeah, you. I mean, if we learned anything from Saturdays, you can't look at a record. Uh, and that's college football any given Saturday. When you see uh, Jacksonville State almost beat a number six Auburn. Like, it really doesn't matter what the record is or who it is. It's who shows up to play and who wants to win. And that's just how it is in college football. You guys haven't scored in the first quarter of the last three games. I guess how important is it for you to get off to a fast start and get some points and, you know, get the lead so you can use your run game? I mean, it's very important. You know, like you said, yeah, we've gotten off to a slow start. But as the thing is, we always – we move the ball in our, in our first couple of drives. It's just – but we just can never – we can never capitalize on them. So it's going to be very important for us this week just to, you know, to get a fast start as well as capitalize on the score. Disappointed in the team's energy level in the last week's game. I mean, yeah, it's very disappointing because you know we we uh, we put ourselves in that situation though to begin with. But then you know when we had to when we brought ourselves back, you know it's just like the energy wasn't there on the sideline. You know when it needed to be the most, and so you know the defense would make a play, and but the offense as on the sideline, you know just sitting there and stuff. You know a couple of us was cheering and stuff like that, but it wasn't like how it needed to be. Like the energy, like we have out there on the practice field and stuff like that. So, and it's like they say, you know, you practice, you're gonna play the way you practice and stuff. So if you don't have energy at practice on most days, you probably won't end up having it in the game. And so you just, it all correlates with each other. Why do you think that is? Well, why do you think there was a lack of energy on the sideline? It probably just has to do with their record. You know, like just I mean, as a team, we probably just took them, took them for granted. You know, having a, being an 0 six team, you know, just like. The coaches were telling us the whole entire week, just like these guys are going to be here to play. There's going to be a fast, physical game, and so you know, just uh, just think some some of the players, you know, just took it for granted, you know, and just didn't come out there with the energy, thinking it was just going to be a walk in the park, and it was an all-out dog bite. When you look at Hawaii, I mean, their record isn't that great, but they've hung with a lot of really good teams. They beat a Pac-12 team. Do you take something from that Wyoming game going into Hawaii? Yeah, like uh, just. Records are not important when it comes to football, you know. So, any at any given point of time, you know, the other team can turn it on, and and you just still be back, and you don't know what's going on. And so, you just have to be be ready to play at any given time on any given day when it comes to college football. We could do some on Matt Eck. I guess. Um, how have you enjoyed him being your strength coach, and why do you think he's been so successful for as long as he's been here? Uh, good old Matt X. So, I mean, I've known him since my freshman year here. And, you know, uh, with, when it comes to w with him, he's a very he's very good at what he does, I would like to say, because, you know, he knows what, what your body needs and stuff. He's been through it all. He's played football at our, at our level or even better at Kansas State. So, I mean, uh, he knows exactly what he's talking about. And us as players, you know, having him on our side uh, has been through everything that we've been through. It's, it's a great plus for our team. And know anybody else who uh, who's ever had him, and so like I said, when I first got here, he uh, he told me what he wanted me to do because when I first got here, I played receiver and stuff. So he told me where I needed to be, told me how I needed to eat, and just told me how to maintain my body, my body mass, and uh, you know. And I appreciate him, and so from since that point on, me and him has developed a very close relationship to where I'll actually just text him every now and then just to see like uh what what should, what can i do to like make myself like better on a f football field is this more flexible more flexibility i'm sorry or just you know like what do i have to do and he'll tell me to come into the weight room me and him will do some stretches and stuff like that and so he'll help me out uh, a great lot I me mean, a lot sorry <laughs> how hard is his program i mean it seems like a lot of what you guys do is in the off season um i guess how hard is it just to get through his program I mean, it's. I mean, every everything is going to be hard when you do when it comes to football. You know, like you say, if this if this sport was easy, everybody would be playing it. So I mean, it's it's a great it's a great challenge. You know, because like you say, our bodies can our bodies can do so much more than what we think they can do, and and Coach Egg knows that, and so he pushes us to the limit. And then what he also does is he gives us a great 
recovery program, you know, just the, you know, he backs off of us a little bit. And then after that back off week, we right back at it. So, I mean, like I said, he knows exactly what he's doing and I'm very appreciative of him. How much does him playing at Kansas State, you know, make you believe in what he's doing because he's kind of been in your position before? Because he's played at a higher level than us when it comes to division. So he's played with much bigger guys than what we are playing against. But also, like, he just he knows what he's doing, and he puts a great staff around us. So, I mean, like when I first got here, we had uh, Coach Lamb here who who's now at Stanford, I believe. And we also had Coach Burt who's also at, uh, I want to say he went to Boise, but then he left Boise, and then he's now at Washington. So, I mean, he's, he's put great people around us, and now we have Coach Hall, and we have Coach uh, Reynolds, and now we have Coach Tokars, and so they're all great with us, and uh, they all all like to have that uh, friendship with us as well. What's going on? I have two statements before we open up here. Uh, first statement is, uh, please, I apologize for my hair. I didn't get a haircut. It's the first thing. Uh, second, I would like to wish a very good, uh, just a good luck to the women's cross country team as they go on to the Mountain West Championship, and I hope they do well. Why did you get a haircut? Oh, man. It's been, it's been like, I don't know, it's been like a, it's been a crazy week, man. Sometimes you just can't get in. And when there's like 15 people in the barbershop, it's kind of impossible. So I try to go at the end of the week, though. I try to take care of it. It doesn't seem like anybody was happy with how you guys played last week. I guess, how do you get past that and the challenge that coaches issued you guys, specifically the, 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 the leaders of the team? I guess, um, do you take that to heart as you try and lead this team forward? Uh, yeah. We have a 24-hour rule. I mean, we, we go in and we look at the film and then we bury it and we move on. And the best way to, you know, you know feel good about it is just go win. You know, go, out, go approach work every single day with, you know, the, the thought of winning on your mind. And um, I, I like the vibe at practice. You know, today was a, today was a great day. Yesterday was, I think, today, yesterday was a pretty, a pretty good day. Um, today, guys were flying around, and um, it's a challenge we have in front of us. So uh, I think a lot of guys are trying to step up to the plate now. It seems like you guys usually respond pretty well to losses, almost like a wake-up call. I mean, wh why do you feel like this team needs that wake-up call to respond back and have a good game? And then kind of one step forward, one step backward kind of thing? I mean, I, I couldn't give you a, a for sure answer about it, but um, but the thing, I mean, no one likes to lose. That's for, that's for sure. That's that's one way to put a chip on your shoulder and motivate you to go out next week and handle the business how you're supposed to. Um, as far as why, I'm not I'm not too sure. And, um, you know, hopefully we don't have to deal with that anymore. So, you know, I just plan on moving past it and, you know, get my guys going so we can uh, go do something. What kind of lessons do you think you can take from the loss to Wyoming? Um, I think myself, when there's an opportunity where I can change a little bit more and I can, you know, make my energy like infectious throughout the the rest of the team, um, to do it and take advantage of it. Um, as far as uh, the team, I think we learned that you you can never look at a record. You can never, you could you have to go into every single football game with the same energy, you know. Um, the same approach, and um, you gotta just you gotta fly around every time you go out there. You gotta be excited to play the game, and if you're not, uh, it'll bite you in the butt, really bad. Like I asked Lenny, if a lot of fans are obviously upset with the way the season has started, I mean, mm -hmm. what would you say to them? You know, about the the approach for the rest of the season and what's happened so far? We're working. Have faith. Um, my hats off to the people that that really that really stick it out with us. I mean, because that's just the ups and downs of the season. I mean, there's, and that's all over the country. You know, some, you know, teams are having ups and downs, and you know, we're one of those teams right now. But um, anybody who thinks the season's dead or, you know, we don't, that we don't have anything in front of us, they're crazy. And I'd rather them, you know, I mean, not be cheering for me. You know, what I mean, that's how I look at it. You know, I want those people that I understand that are really looking at the big picture, and the big picture is we still have opportunity to do some great things. And um, I appreciate those people that are on the ride with us. You think homecoming week's coming at the right time, considering the game you came off and maybe to get people excited again this week about the program? I mean, you always love coming back home. I mean, that's for sure. We, we love you know playing the MAC. That's always fun for us. Um, um, yeah, but I think knowing what happened, you know how we what we laid out and put out on film last week. Uh, this is a great a great opportunity, you know, have the you know the stands packed and you know, people loud and and energy flowing through you know the entire 
the entire stadium is just going to create a great atmosphere. So, and our guys feed off of that. So, hopefully, you know, we we you know we go into the game. No, not hopefully. I know for sure that's going to be it's going to be a great atmosphere. And I just want uh, my guys to take advantage of it. They take advantage of it. It's going to be a great night. You say you feed off it during the game, but when you look at what all the stuff going on Friday, the pep rally, the march from the yards, all that stuff, does that kind of pump up this team, maybe even more? Um, I mean, we don't really get to contribute to any of those. I mean, we're kind of we're kind of stuck in the hotel, but no, I mean not for you. But oh, for for, for the, 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 the yeah, the yeah, it does, it like does, it does. It gives great excitement to the community, which I think that's great. I think that um, you know, that gives people. I mean, it just gives people anticipation to the game and. Um, I hope people are excited. I hope that's what that's what home, homecoming week is all about. Just people being excited, you know, fun time, and you know, just brings the university together. So I'm excited for the you know for the fans, everybody who gets to you know be a part of it. You was on Matt Eck, I guess. How has he contributed to your time here and made you a better player? Um, he showed me a lot of lessons uh, on the field for sure, but he showed me more about off the field than on. Um, uh, he's one of those guys that. Um, my favorite characteristic in a person is consistency, a person that's consistent, a person that, you know, is the same way. And uh, that's the same, he's been the same way since I got here to right now. And um, he's watched me grow and develop. He's watched, you know, guys like Brian, Lenny, and, you know, Keem, and, you know, all the guys that have been here, Matt, and stuff like that. He's watched those guys develop. And, and not only has he helped us, you know, on the field, he's helped us off the field, too, just – just simple, you know, life lessons he's taught us, and you know, we appreciate him. We really do. He's a great guy. How does he keep the program, you know, fresh and exciting, and you know, look forward to going to the the weight room when maybe that's not the most fun place to play, be for a lot of people? I mean, I mean, just the environment he creates, the juice. It's alive in the weight room, and um, we have a lot of fun in there. I mean, he's uh, he he he's persistent on how we work for sure, but he also wants it to be a fun loud crazy you know environment you know where you know you're getting your you're getting your work done but at the same time you know you're having you're having a blast doing it what kind of challenge does Hawaii present uh, another physical week for us um, we just have to show resilience and uh, come back stronger than what we did last week um, we knew what we had to do against Wyoming we didn't execute and um, our biggest thing was tackling and bringing energy. We have to have that, especially coming back home. So that's going to be a big challenge for us that we can, you know, definitely achieve. But it's not done through talking. It's done through uh, preparation, through practice, and executing on Saturday when it ultimately, ultimately matters. To kind of put a chip on your shoulder, the defensive shoulder, knowing that people are coming in here thinking they can run on you. It definitely doesn't. Um, that wasn't us uh, as a defense, as a team. Um, collectively, uh, in all phases of the game, we just, you know, we we were flat. And we, we lacked energy, we lacked passion, and that's something you can't do. You can't take this game for granted. And I think a chip on our shoulder is a big, you know, stretch. And it's, we'll go out there and we'll play our defense and, you know, fly around to the ball like we do and we've shown in the previous games that we played. And, um, that's, that's just what we have to do. We have to stay true to ourselves and uh, not take advantage of, you know, this, this game that we love so much. Everyone who came up here today kept mentioning the energy. What, what would you chalk up the lack of that energy to? Just getting punched in the mouth, you know. Uh, Coach Polian stressed that, you know, don't take this team for granted, but, you know, we just didn't want to believe that it was true, you know. We could say, oh, yeah, we hear you, but through our action, how we play, we, we didn't. We didn't believe a word he was saying. We thought we could just go out there and just roll it out. And that's, um, that's something you can't do. Everybody's going out to compete every Saturday. And um, unfortunately, we got hit in the mouth and we did not respond. So. Uh, your relationship with Maddock, I guess, what do you think um, has made him a good strength coach and how has he helped you? He's been invested, invested in me uh, since I got here. Um, great guy he, he does his research on how he can you know better us as an athlete the longevity of our body not just you know saying lift you know 300 pounds and squat 500 pounds and just do a repetitive he 
he looks at the science behind it. Um, he's gone out and invested, you know, shakes for us for after our post workout. Uh, just a great guy. I don't know anyone else that knows my body better than myself, other than him. And um, like I said, with his staff, uh, they all focus on you know how to better the athlete. You know, he doesn't teach, he doesn't coach everyone in the same lens. He knows, okay, if I'm working with Don, I need to do this. If I'm working with Brian, I need to do this. And it's like, he takes that extra time, you know, to stay on top of what he needs to do in his field. And, um, you know, weightlifting and, and strength uh, staffs, you know, their, their occupation and what they do, it evolves, you know, all the time. And he's always up to date on what's going on. Cause I'll, I'll, I'll hear about some stuff that uh, he'll pitch at us. I'm like, yeah, everybody's doing this around the country. And I'll talk to some of my buddies that are in at the college level in sports, and you know, they're just you know catching on to what he presented to us about six months prior. So he's very proactive in you know making sure we have the best uh, the best opportunity in, in getting stronger and faster. And since I've been here, I've gotten stronger, faster. Um, flexible everything it's just he's just invested in, in the athletes and what's best for them talking about the evolution of you know the strength program how, how different is it what you guys do now as opposed to five years ago when you got here when I got here with coach all it was more so we need to push weight if you're not pushing weight you can't play on the field um, and at that time you know it was no right or wrong looking back it's no right or wrong but that was just what was driven then, and Coach Eck had some say, but if that's what Coach Alt wanted, that's what had to be done. He had to do his job. So Coach Pullian, in a sense, I feel is giving Coach Eck some of the free range to, you know, what do you, what do you, what do you think is best for our athletes, and keeping them strong, yet making sure you know they're not beating their bodies up within the season, or you know, just pretty much, you know. Now it's it's more so um, soft tissue stretching, you know, post exterior stretches after workouts and getting your body loose before workout, stuff like that, rather than the actual weightlifting and how much you're pushing, how much you're you know lifting. So it's a big change in that, more so directed at uh, how you're preparing your body before a lift. Then it was just lift, now it's, you know, take care of your body, lift, take care of your body after.